All right, this video is going to be about swapping over a Harbor Freight engine onto your regular snowblower. If you came across the issues like I have this winter, um, my older snowblower is basically a piece of junk. Um, the body itself is still good. The auger is nice. The body is thick steel um, and everything like that. But the motor... It sounds like a Sherman tank driving through the driveway, but, you know, it just isn't doing what it used to. So, this is your older motor here. This one here is just a flathead engine. Um, notice the flathead there. People say it's a flathead. They don't know what a flathead is. Flathead motor basically means the head itself is flat. There's nothing in it. Um, there's valves. The valves are actually on the side, so when you take that head off, everything you see is flat. You see the piston and the bottoms of the valves, um, compared to the new one, which is a overhead valve system, which is more efficient in the small engine world, since flathead motors, we're thinking flathead motors with the hot rodders, we're thinking the old 30s, 40s hot rods, um, even earlier than that, um, overhead valve V8s were big in the muscle car era um well small engines are just getting there um you know we're all on overhead cams now and variable valve time and whatnot in the automotive field but the small engines this is a uh, good step in the right direction for them they manage to throw all this emission stuff on there as well so you people know but this is it um pretty sweet deal actually if you notice here this crank layout that pattern there. They definitely did their research on this motor because the pattern is very similar to the pattern on this one. Okay. So it's very similar. Um, the crank does sit slightly higher than that one just because it's a bigger body, but this one is all pretty much the same. And the bolts I pulled out of my old motor had the same thread pitch um, as the new motor. So everything is threaded right in. Now, there are some few issues you may run into. You may not. It depends on your setup. Now, if you have this Tecumseh motor like I have, or maybe other variations, this one here is 11 horse. Um, not 100% sure on the Briggs and Stratton models, but you're either going to have a three-quarter shank or a one-inch shank coming out of the motor. So the crankshaft will either be three-quarters or it'll be one inch. Now, you can tell there is a very noticeable difference there. You see the thickness on that one. Now, the thickness on that one, that one's much beefier. All right, that's one inch right there. It's more heavy duty. You know, you don't have to worry about that. That thing could take a beating. Now, only issue we have with that is now our pulley, right? So, here's our dual pulley setup. This came off uh, the original motor. It's a keyed pulley. Um, right there in the center there. That's called the keyway, for anybody that doesn't know. So, when it's talking about keyed or not keyed, that's what they're looking for. Keyed pulley. Um, that's what you're going to want is a keyed pulley. Um, just for the fact that the amount of force put on is you don't want this pulley to be able to slip around on that shaft. So the new motor comes with its own key. Um, it looks like a quarter inch key. There's different sizes. So you also got to pay attention to that as well. But the problem being is I see this one here. It'll slide. Once I find the spot where it drops in. Right there. It'll slide right on. Problem with the new one, since it's one inch, it is the exact diameter. The outside is the exact diameter of this shaft. So, <clears throat> I've managed, go by going online, and what's pretty sweet about the other now, you have all these parts vendors for these motors that will sell parts to repair your snow blowers and riding mowers, small engines and all that. They have all the diagrams. So you're able to look at other models 
and find what is available. So I was able to find a pulley very similar to this, the part number um, that I needed for it, and I was able to search it on Amazon, eBay, so on and so forth. Um, there's multiple sources that sell the bigger one-inch pulley that is very similar to this. The rear pulley, the smaller one, which on this model drives the wheels, that is the identical size. The other one for turning the auger was slightly smaller, but you know what? I think that'll be just fine because this motor has more torque, more power than my old motor did, and it'll actually throw, spin it faster in that sense because it's just like a bicycle. Um, it's in a smaller gear, so it, it'll work just fine. But with that being said, that was the only issue I ran into so far. Mounting and everything will be pretty much the same. They have two slots down here on each side. There's two slots, one on this side, one on the other, and then also one pre-drilled hole. Um, that'll mount just standard, like always. Now, the electric start. It does have electric start, which is a pretty cool feature, which is why I like this one. Didn't feel like having to rip that cord all the time. But you still do have the option. And that new motor has a lot of nice tension on it compared to the old one. The only problem I did come across is that Obviously, most motors that we see is a AC starter. Well, this is a DC starter, which is good and bad, depending on what you're applying it to. Um, actually, I mean, there's no issues with it really at all, um, because what I'm going to do is use a motorcycle battery or a uh, riding mower battery and just put a tray on my snowblower and mount it there. Um, this thing will put out enough of a charge with it just running to maintain it um, while running. It's not an issue, just like anything else. Um, so, not really worried about that. So, you see, if you look here, you have your off, on, and start. There's a circuit protector on there. Um, but like I said, no plug, right? No AC plug anywhere. But that's okay, because it's a DC one. You're looking just for a 12-volt signal, and it's just back to the old days. Real simple stuff here. You got this wire right here. That's your hot all the that's your that's your hot all the time wire right here. Alright. So you would undo this nut. You would put a lead on there. You'd run that to your 12 volt battery, wherever you locate that. Down here in the lower area, you would attach a ground wire. And you'd bring that ground wire up to the negative wire on the battery. And that would be the end of that. So when you turn your key over here, when you turn the key. You're basically taking this wire right here, you're hot all the time, connecting it, continuity, sending it down this lead, right into here, that's going to engage that solenoid, which is going to turn that starter, which will crank this engine. And off that lead right here, you can run, you could run your other wires for, say, your headlight or whatever if you wanted to, because that's your, that's your hot all the time wire. Right, so that would actually leave the light on all the time. So you wouldn't want it there. You would want to pick up off of the switched power for a run, an on-run wire, which you'll be able to pick up out of this harness. All right. Now, what I thought was nice about this unit is if you notice, once you open it up, and it's a steel gas can for one. Some people prefer plastic due to rust and all that. I don't. I think plastic's cheap. Over the years, it'll get brittle, crack. It's just garbage. I'd rather see metal. I like to see metal on things still. All right. Now, you can't really see in there, but we're going to turn the light on. Okay, there we go. So now, if you're looking inside there, they got a fuel level in there, which is pretty cool. That thing will rise up when you fill it up. Um, there's also a screen in there, which is really nice. And the cap is also a pretty sweet deal. It's, you know, it's got the two little bayonets sticking out. Chain so you don't lose it. It locks in place. Literally, one twist, it's on. Um, of course, people are saying that you got to watch out with these because of O-rings drying up and all this stuff I've heard. I don't know what is true or what is not because I haven't had a chance to test it yet. But the main thing is, is that it does require you to put stabilizer we want you to put stabilizer and maintain warranty obviously the majority of us probably won't while we're just running it usually we do it when storing it but if you're in cold areas it's a good idea as well um, i'm going to do it just to avoid any issues with the warranty 
Not like this guy that goes to take it for warranty at Harbor Freight is going to freaking take my gas out and make sure they're stable in it. But, hey, whatever. Just so that way when they question you, they can't give you any shit. Now, if you look at this section here, here's your carburetor area setup, which is pretty sweet. I like this setup because it gives you a lot of options. Uh, real easy to understand, real easy to use. Comes with a built-in fuel petcock, um, which is nice, right down here. This lever right there is on, off for fuel flow, which is pretty sweet. Um, also up here you have a choke. Choke here is real nice. Everything's nice and solid too. It feels pretty good. I mean, it's a plastic arm. I mean, at some point with the cold and all that, I'm sure that will just snap off. Um, but for now, we'll see what happens. We'll see if it holds up. Now, this big stick here is your throttle. Um, this is the off position. Real stiff from the factory. Real stiff, all right? Real stiff. So all the vibration and whatnot, it'll hold itself in position if being used, you know, manually by somebody. Now, if you had other intentions for this motor, say you were going to use it for a go-kart or something similar like that, there's provisions for that. Um, or if you wanted to have a, you know, a real-time throttle where you're pressing a pedal or if you're pulling a trigger or something of the sort, twist throttle, whatever. There's a provision for that. So let's move this flyer out of the way. Right down here, you can see that, okay? There's your throttle linkage. Now, this screw right here, if you look at it from the side, you can't see it from this angle, but there's a hole in it for you to slide a cable through. So you can slide your cable in through there. Tighten that screw up, that'll bite the cable, okay? And this pivots in here. Now, right here, that part right there is a clamp to clamp the casing of the cable. So you clamp your cable there, casing cable there. You run the cable end out and you can tie it around the screw. And now this part right over here, which will be right there, that's a jam nut. That's a locking style nut. All right. So right now it's obviously snug. They have it tighter than you would have it if you were running a cable on it. It's tighter right now, so it holds its position. Um, if you were to loosen that, that nut will keep its position because the locking nut it won't move on you. And that would loosen up this linkage, allowing you to run a regular throttle pedal or twist throttle, which I thought was really cool. Another thing I noticed about this engine is that you have... Um, it has an air cleaner built into it, which I thought was really sweet because all the other snowblowers I had never had an air cleaner or cover of any sort, you know, just a little tin cover, you know, and snow would get right into it. This thing, that's not the case. Um, it's completely covered, which is really nice. It's all enclosed, real nice setup, and it'll keep all that snow out of there. So it should do very well. Next thing is the muffler. The muffler on this one here is much larger, much, much larger, as you can see. And it's got a cool little screen here. All right. Muscle uh a nice heat shield on there. Um, it's all powder coated. You got a casted manifold. That thing doesn't look too cheesy. It's a casted manifold. It looks pretty, pretty good. Um, we'll see. But so far it looks good, and I'm assuming it's going to be a lot quieter than this hunk of crap with this big rotted out box on the side that does literally nothing on or off. It pretty much sounded the same. Um, which is annoying if you're snow blowing at night. I mean, granted, the snow blower is loud regardless, snow blower, snow blower, but nonetheless, it's nice to know. You know, I don't know. I work all day with all these loud noises, I work on these big vehicles, hear this stuff all the time. The last thing I want to do is go home and hear this freaking battleship running, rattling all over the place, barely throwing any fucking snow. So, now that's taken care of. This thing's also very versatile. If you notice, it's got two oil fill plugs. So depending on how you, your application of what you're using it for, um, you don't have to sacrifice accessibility, you know, um, same, same on each side, each one, it comes slightly pre-filled, um, down at the low mark. Okay. It's only wet down there. Let it focus. There we go. So you got to fill this thing yourself. Um, the guy at the store said they do take the return on the motor, but if it's full of oil or gasoline, they do not. So be aware of that. Me, I kind of just shoot from the hip and I just go for it usually. And you know what? If I run into a problem, 
um, I make it work. So this is basically the gist of what we have here. Um, this first part video of the whole process is just simply to show you the contrast between an older motor and a newer motor to give you an idea of what you're dealing with. Um, cause sometimes somebody might read specs and they not no clue what the hell they're reading. Um, or, you know, some of them have the idea in the head and be deterred to do that. The whole reason why I did this is because my snowblower is a 30 inch self-propelled electric start, um, has a headlight, had all that, you know, it, it, it was a beast when it came out. Um, obviously it's older now, but the body itself, the steel sticker, it's more rigid, it's rugged, the auger has serrated teeth, it is it is a beast of a snowblower, and the body is still in good shape. Um, some minor surface rust, but nothing I'm not going to be able to take care of. And when looking at a new one, in order to replace it with a comparative, with a comparable product, um, really can't, because they're, they're looking for like 1500 plus for it, um, which is insane for a snowblower. So, decided this was the better route. I could rebuild this motor and fix it, but it's only going to have so much power. So, I decided you'd be better off to upgrade the engine, spend a couple hundred more, and keep the same body. So, that's just part one of this installation. Um, I'll keep you posted. And thank you for watching.